there have been decisions over the years that were stupid and that should have been resolved, like the centre-back crisis. Bringing in Kabak and Ben Davies at the end of a window. The f*** did that do? Really? Nothing. This video is being brought to you with thanks to our friends at Surfshark. Surfshark is an app, a browser extension, that allows you to not only browse the internet entirely anonymously, but also very securely. Surfshark will secure your data with industry-leading measures using uncrackable encryption and the most secure VPN protocols. One subscription with Surfshark will work across all of your devices. I use it for unlocking things like American Netflix. We also use it if we want to watch our Canadian DAZN account and a couple of other bits and pieces. The good news is you can get 83% off. That's right, I did say 83% off and an additional three months free using the Anfield Agenda link in the description. They've also got a really credible and unique 30 day money back guarantee. If you don't like Surfshark, it doesn't meet your needs, which I'm gonna be honest with you, it will and you won't. But if you do, if you wanna change, Surfshark give you 30 days to change your mind. Why not give Surfshark a try? You'll be supporting us here at Anfield Agenda and you'll be treating yourself to the best VPN provider out there Barnum. Would you not agree that we've been perilously close at times and the lack of options from the bench has potentially been what lost us a couple of Champions Leagues? Think back to Kiev and think back to Lalana having to come off the bench. An unfit Lalana having to come off the bench. Think to when Salah went off. Think to last season. What did Carlo Ancelotti say afterwards? We knew how Liverpool were going to play. We knew how they're going to set up. We prepared accordingly. So I would argue to you, my friend, that as much as you might think I'm wrong, you and I and everybody else in the chat don't want to be sitting here in three or four years' time when Klopp's coming to the end of his Liverpool reign, maybe, and saying, wasn't it brilliant having Klopp at the club? How lucky were we to have him as a manager? But I feel like we left a couple of trophies on the table and I feel like his legacy could have been a little bit stronger. And that's what I don't want to happen because we all love Klopp. We're very fortunate to have him at the club. But he's not infallible. I keep saying none of us are. We all have parts of our personality or our mindset or our makeup that are stubborn or we trust too much in players sometimes or in people. We all have favourites. You know, we do. We mightn't admit it, but we do. So, um, yeah, I just feel like we can strengthen. And that list of midfield players that you've had there, I mean, let me ask you that in all honesty, how many of those get into City's midfield? Not too many. Not too many. Let's be honest about it. Maybe Thiago. For being your Rodri, you could have a toss up there. But look at City's depth. Look what they've just done. They brought in Calvin Phillips to come in and compete with Rodri. They've got Gundogan still there at the club. They've got Bernardo Silva for now. Phil Foden, although he's mainly using an attacking perspective. Kevin De Bruyne. They are not short of talent. We don't have enough specialists. For me, City are on a definite level. To us, their owners invest a lot. I mean, okay, Chelsea, 175 million so far in the window with probably another 80 or 100 million to go. Spurs, Daniel Levy freed up 150 million to invest in transfers in the market. Arsenal, how much have they spent in this window? Now, look, I will openly say, I don't know off the top of my head how much all of these clubs have brought back in, and I'm sure that they've brought in significant sums of money. But what I can tell you as a Liverpool fan is, we're almost at a break-even point in the window. Um, and we would have been in a profit if Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain hadn't gotten injured and somebody was willing to buy him. So that's where I'm at. Our owners, yet again, are going to go through another window in what was promised to be the big window, the one that we were told for the last three windows was coming. And yet again, we're almost at a break-even point. And that's, look... You will say to me, Craig, that's not a bad thing because we do our business really well. We sell really well and we invest really well. And I'm not going to argue with you. You're right. Our business is brilliant. Our track record of transfers is pretty good. But the landscape is changing. Football is changing. Investment in players. Look across the... Look, if you don't believe me, let me just put it this way. This is on track to be the highest grossing window in the Premier League's history for transfers, incoming transfers. So if you don't believe in what I'm saying, the statistics are there to back it up. And this is coming off the back of a global pandemic where clubs are coming off record losses, but yet we're still seeing an unprecedented amount of money being spent. Do you know what I mean? 
but not from us. Our owners are stuck up. They need to invest more into Klopp. I, I can't tell you definitively if it's Klopp or the owners or if it's a combination of both. What I do know is we've heard Jurgen Klopp say often enough that there needs to be value in a transfer and the value needs to be on a couple of things. Obviously, the caliber of the footballer, the type of the player, the experience, the standard that he plays at. Um, and I'm well aware that football transfers are a tricky business. My one comment Football fans aren't idiots. We get spoken to like we're fucking idiots at times. Like we haven't got our own two eyes. Do you remember the window? And I can't remember for the life of me which one it was. Where Jurgen Klopp said that there weren't players available who could improve our squad. I can't for the life of me remember what window that was. But I remember a lot of Liverpool fans, myself included, scratching our heads going, What? There aren't players out there who are better than Oxley chamberlain There aren't players out there who are better than Curtis Jones. There aren't players out there who could come in and compete with Trent at right back or give back up to Trent. At the time, there weren't centre-backs out there that we could have brought in to replace Dejan Lovren. I feel like we don't learn our lessons. But all of that being said, still a fresh season, still a lot of hope, still a lot to look forward to. But all that we want is, is to feel like the manager has been given the best tools possible for him to go and make the best fist of the season that he can. And I can't in good conscience sit here and say that I feel like Jurgen Klopp, he might, he will probably differ. Jurgen Klopp will probably say he feels very supported and he feels like if he wanted a player, he would get one. That may be the case. But I don't feel like we've got enough tools in our toolbox to really go out there and make another sustained challenge for four trophies. I don't like what ifs. I don't like what ifs, especially when there's a reason to make sure that we don't need to talk about what ifs. And that's by going out and getting some more squad depth. Uh, we have to spend big money next window, but it won't happen. I'm fuck, fucking sick of talking about next windows, lads. I'm sick of it. How many next windows or next summer FC conversations have we had? And like some people believe that we have no right to speak about or to speak up or to be in any way complaining. You know, you're not allowed to have any nuance in these conversations. People think you're either FSG out and hate them completely or you're a top red and you don't see anything wrong with what the club do ever. There are a lot of us that are in the middle, you know, that will acknowledge the great stuff that FSG have done, that will pull them up on the stuff that they've done wrong, that will give the players in Klopp all the credit that they deserve for the stuff they've done right, but will also point out that there have been decisions over the years that were stupid. And that should have been resolved, like the centre-back crisis. Bringing in Kabak and Ben Davies at the end of a window. The fuck did that do? Really? Nothing. And we shouldn't have been in the Champions League. We are very, 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 very lucky that Alison Becker pulled a miracle out of his ass and planted that header top ins and we pushed on. And... You know, we've heard in recent years that the markets are tough. Football clubs are facing increased losses during the pandemic and after the pandemic. Revenues were down right across the board. Other clubs found a way to spend money in this window. Spurs have freed up 150 mil. 150 million to go and back Conte. Spurs, who have a new stadium debt, let's not forget. A whole new stadium. But they found 150 million. Barcelona have taken the piss and spent I don't know how much money. PSG have just dropped a truckload of cash for Mbappe to sign on. Well, they still have his wages, Messi's wages, Donnarumma's wages, Ramos's wages, and all the other top stars at their club. Chelsea, new owner, going to spend about a quarter of a billion in this window. Manchester United, doing their business as we speak. Martinez, you know, they're not the club to hold up, but I'm just showing that there's money being spent. Arsenal. A lot of money spent in this window. Very good business. I'm not knocking other clubs' business, but what I'm saying is there's money doing the rounds. There's money available to other clubs. Why are we always crying poor mouth? Why are we always hearing that we're cutting our cloth accordingly? And and I'm fucked up with hearing as well about our wage bill. Oh, we've one of the highest wage bills in world football. Okay, fair enough. But one player in our club earns what I would deem a superstar wage. The rest of them are on good wages. I just don't understand it. I just don't understand it. Coming off a nearly season. And we hear that the fight's there and the spirit's there and they want to redeem and they want to come back and they want to chase City down. Well, the owners need to show that as well. The owners need to show that they're serious about wanting to win another Premier League and win another Champions League. 